not 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 that I was gonna say it's not normally seen, but it's uh, often seen as disadvantageous to the second player who it's supposed to be helping. Well, fi fighter ambush is one of those objectives where if your opponent doesn't have squadrons, they're never gonna take it. Like almost any other squadron is, or sorry, any other objective in your repertoire is going to be better for them, no matter how bad they are. Right. For what it is, it, it is the best possible yellow objective that you can play. Because uh, it's either that or fire lanes or uh, contested output, out, outpost rather. The, the downside is that you lose a deployment advantage because you're not allowed to place your squadrons down until uh, you placed all your ships down. And oftentimes they are way out in front of your ships, uh, out of out of command zone. If if you uh, if you decide to do it, you can still deploy them normally. So you do sort of lose some of your advantage. Yeah, but the, but the hope is well, the idea is that uh, your squadrons are going to be so much better than theirs, whatever they're bringing, that once you win the squadron war, which should be your top priority, you're going to be able to um, gain many more tokens than your opponent. right? Com compared to something like Contested Outposts, where let's say you hold it for three turns at the start of the game, and then your opponent holds it for two turns, uh, and then no one holds it for the last turn. Well, then you're only gaining 20 points in that scenario, which is not a lot. Right. right? It's, it's the potential for upside. Is what the is I think the reason why fan, fighter ambushes is, is chosen as the yellow objective of choice for these uh, fighter heavy lists. So we've got uh, Eric on the top of the screen and Mac on the bottom of the screen. Uh, Eric uh, was was at our regionals last year. I think he was playing an all ship list with a bunch of Architons and uh, an ISD. But this time he's bringing uh, what seems to be a very popular way of building imperialists these days, which is um, an ISD, a bunch of squadrons, the usual culprits being Gendon, Merrick Steel, uh, Mahler Mythil, and Season to Taste, and usually complemented by one or more ships. In uh, Eric's case, you've got a Naked Raider 1 and two Gazantes. He has Strategic Advisor, so he's going to be... Uh, He's going to be able to activate five times in a turn versus Mackenzie's two. Mac does have an insanely high bid, so he's guaranteed that he's going to be going first here. So on Mac's side, we've got an Imperial two with uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Admiral Thrawn becoming, I think, lately for a lot of uh, successful Imperialists, is, is the commander to take because uh, not only does it give basically all your ships uh, two commands in a turn, but uh, if you're playing a, a squadron-heavy list, it allows you to use all of your ships in your list as carriers without having to dial in the command. And it also protects you from getting slicer tool. Like, one of the biggest problems of a carrier fleet, if your opponent brings slicer tools, then... Uh, you're, you're... Yeah. Especially if they're... Up a creek without a paddle. Exactly. If they're a first player, well then, sometimes all it takes is not being able to activate squadrons for one turn, and your opponent can capitalize on that and uh, either kill the carrier or um, or uh, wipe out your squadrons where I have a chance to activate. But wow. Thrawn, Thrawn uh, allows you to... Um, have a bit of control. Now, he puts three dials aside, and you choose each turn whether you're going to reveal one of those dials or not. Yeah. So in a carrier list like this, you would... Just make all those styles, each each and every single one of them, a uh, squadron command. Yeah, squadron, squadron, navigate, or triple squadrons usually the uh, the, the, way to the go. commands that I see. They don't have to be stacked in a particular order, and you can choose not to do it on a turn. Is the three turns, the three dials are more than enough because, like in a game of Armada, right? Turn one generally you're not using Thrawn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not even turn two. Now, if you have Governor Price, that might change, but. Uh, you usually see Thrawn being used on turns three, four, five, which is where the meat of the action happens. We've got the fighter ambush, and I think that's Eric is the one that has the fighter ambush. Yeah. Uh, so he's he's forced to place all his ships down before his squadrons. Uh, very interesting placement on his two Gazantes. He's basically conga line them. But the problem with putting your uh, ships the way that Eric has put them is that you know, it's kind of like X-Wing, right? You're forced to move one before the other. And oh, I know that exactly. yeah, you play, you play, play X-Wing Swarm, I, I play so you know how it is, right? Like the order in which you place, especially different 
uh, initiative pilots in front of each other is important? In your no, I'm not, I'm not sure that matters here at, uh, at turn one because you can certainly start by turning one and not turning the other. And you know, yeah. On turn one, it doesn't matter the order in which he activates it, but certainly later on in the game, you're going to want control over when you activate which ship and putting them in front of each other like that or even putting your ships parallel to each other, much like he's doing with the ISD, can really limit your maneuvering decisions. He's, he's kind of stuck his ISD, even just being near the Gazantes, he's having difficulty placing it now, right? Yeah. Because they're going to be here, mm -hmm. right? If they turn, if they don't turn, right? And so that ISD is going to have to deal with them. So they're going to almost have to run away. Right. Yeah. So that one will have to break that way. And either that will follow, right. in which case they're going to bump into each other or it breaks this way. And um, even then that, that stops the that enters into a conflict with how you're moving your ISD, yep. whether it can go fast, whether it can go slow. Certainly the fact that the back one is at a higher speed than the front one or the ISD, right, is going to lead to some maneuvering conflicts. Right. And look at this. This is Look at where Mac put his, uh, his ISD. Yeah, of course, because that gives him um, quite a few options. He has like a nice little compact deployment yep. developed already. So he needs to do that because... Uh, you know, Eric now is going to be able to deploy his squadrons. If he if he put his ISD here, that would allow Eric to perhaps deploy his squadrons here and I, and isolate and yeah, keep them. They wouldn't be in the flak bubble of the uh, of the uh, Imperial Star Destroyer. But also notice that there's a cluster of rocks right here, which is going to force Mac unless he he wants to drive through him. He's going to have to basically fly like this now. Uh, I just want to point out as well, right, that, that, that these pieces, yep. I believe, I was trying to pay attention during the <laughs> deployment, that they were placed by Mac. So yep. Mac has specifically gone in and tightened those rocks up, right? He, he, he must believe that that is to his advantage to have a tight rock deployment. The, yeah, the reason why you would do that is because um, with Eric putting the station here, he was probably uh, looking for a lane to drive his ISD down and perhaps um, force an engagement on this side of the board. Okay. But when Mac puts these rocks here, it makes it a lot harder for Eric's ships to maneuver around that area, which may have forced him to put Because uh, he was having a bit ISD of difficulty there. deciding where he was going to put his ISD, and yep. certainly there is space for it here. Yep. As so far there would have been way. space for the ISD here as well. So yep. he had... So Eric had, had made three lanes essentially for his ISD to go in, and he chose the far one. Chose yep. the far one. So now Eric's deploying his uh, fighter ambush squadrons. He has to keep in mind that he can either deploy them normally, or they have to be at distance one of uh, one of the obstacles. One of the things he has to be careful for, and something I've fallen victim to, is fighter ambush. It's very tempting uh, to put your fighters far ahead in the hopes of engaging an enemy ship turn one, but. If your opponent's smart and he's going to keep his fighters in the in the uh, his big ship's flak bubble, well then that leaves your squadrons isolated with no way of uh, of activating. So yeah, he's got to put them uh, at distance one of an obstacle. Now this this is an interesting deployment as well, um, certainly because I don't know if you can sort of mock up how fast an ISD moves. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you're going to look at one, speed two. He's going to be right around here next turn. Right. So he's planning, if you're thinking ahead, right, Eric's planning certainly an aggressive move, or has to move his fighters <coughs> aggressively in the next turn. He really has no choice but to start pushing them. Otherwise, in the next round, his ISD is going to be on top of them. Th this deployment allows him to put his guys in front, effectively in front of his ISD mm -hmm. without fear of a speed two ISD running them over on turn one and then putting them behind them. Sure. So what what will probably happen is that Eric will move his ship up here. Mm -hmm. Well, he could slow down. It depends on what Mac does. Then uh, these guys, depending on which way the ISD moves, Mac's ISD moves, mm -hmm. uh, Eric will either break this way with his fighter ball or break this way. Now, do you think that he's going to aim for Max squadrons? So looking at looking at Eric's squadron complement, it's uh, got a... <clears throat> it looks very anti-ship oriented. 
Whereas yes. Max looks very anti-squadron oriented with with Mahler and Bosk, mm-hmm. right? Versus versus the uh, the bombers over here. Darth Vader. I mean, the American and uh, Jenden combo is pretty pretty standard. So I would say that Eric actually has. They're both fairly multi-purpose uh, squadron balls. Sure. Right. I mean, Merrick Steel is good whether it's against a ship or another squadron. Uh, Bosk yeah. is primarily an anti-brace ace. Yeah. Ship or or generic uh, ship. There's but there's some braces on Eric's side of the table. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's just just the fact that Eric has. Eric has a little bit of extra anti-ship oomph because they both... So Eric has eight squadrons versus Max six. But Eric's two extra squadrons are just... Gamma squadron bombers. Yeah, they're bombers, pretty much. Or a gamma and a a regular Mm -hmm. bomber. Zertic and Darth Vader, which, uh, you know, Zertic is going to probably be used to protect either Mahler, Mythil, or Dengar, or Merrick Steel. I mean, you have two escort guys, Mm -hmm. right? If he's going to activate four squadrons with his ISD, what he would probably do is activate. Um, well, you activate Jendin and Merrick. Merrick, Jendin, and then you bring in Zertic, perhaps. And leave, probably Vader. Well, you want to maybe leave Vader at the back because he also really? has an escort. So, um, it, if I had if I had an opportunity to shoot at Zertic and Vader, I'd probably mm-hmm. kill Vader first because he's a lot more dangerous. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, like Vader's probably the first target. Uh, yeah, he's got escort. He has to go down. Yeah. It's really frustrating, actually, that, that Vader has escort. Yeah. I'd almost prefer if he didn't. Yeah. I I mean, that might have been a balancing thing. I think if he didn't have escort, he might have been a little bit too powerful, but... I don't, I'm not sure anybody really cares mm-hmm. if Vader is one of the best ships in the game, right? He's well known. He, I think he should be. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's Vader. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, like, the Armada, in Armada, they just keep adding him. Like, you can almost put Vader... You need Imperialist in yep. every single slot. You, you know what the problem with Vader and Luke Skywalker is? They Because they're iconic Star Wars characters, they they kind of are forced to show up in... Uh, in the well, first wave of at the first wave of the game where they're yeah. still figuring out the balancing of all the stuff. Absolutely. And so they're either ridiculously overpowered or supremely they overpowered. Ha- in Imperial Assault, they basically were unplayable. They had to go back and add num- values to them yeah. much later in the game to try to get those units back in, but... I, th- I thought in Imperial Assault Vader was very good and they had the nerve oh because it was Vader and then the um, Imperial Guards like yeah. the red the red guards and they just had they, they nerfed them and then the point cost became too much mm. they started putting things out for lower point cost that you're getting better value and they actually introduced things later on where they, it was actually negatives to the point cost oh my gosh as upgrades so meanwhile in the game Eric uh, <clears throat> excuse me Eric Moving very quickly with those uh, yeah so the Raider moved speed 2 Mm-hmm. Turned in, and then so did the uh, the Gazanti. They so the Gazanti did a squadron command, banked the token. Rave did a nav command, banked the token. Um, you were talking about this earlier, though, Devin. Like, look, he's kind of almost blocking himself with the maneuver he's done with. Now, the, if he's willing to pay the price to do that, right? I mean, this is a speed three from. Uh, if he wants that speed two later and doesn't really want his ISD moving that quickly, then. If he wants, he's willing to pay the price of a damage on his Gazanti. Uh, I don't know. Like, is he going to swing the ISD out, or is he going to like slow roll by bumping? Well, and one thing to know is that he's got damage, Jerry, so he's got yeah. actually got a lot of movement options. So he could do a double tick on on joint one, and uh, then a tick on joint two. So he could go like basically this, and then end up facing. But that Jared's way. rod again is a damage, is it not? Yeah, but. Eh. All right, so he's, fine. Go, he's going to speed three with the ISD. Uh, and into that, there's that bump I was talking about, right? But that uh, that means he doesn't move at all. He can't do that inside turn. Oh, that's interesting. Can he do that when he's bumped? He can do that. That's what he's going to do. So he's bumping, which yeah. allows him to overlap on the... Uh, yeah. So the bump allows him to overlap the template. So you know what he might actually template. do? He might ignore the ISD... And he might be trying to do this and try to intercept the uh, the yeah. glad, eh? Because he was earlier he was checking range from his fighter ball mm-hmm. to the ISD, right? So he wants to know yeah. that's essentially. So we know because he was doing the measurements, right? That this front line is range just about range five to the front of the ISD, right? And the back line is just a bit out. So if he lets Mac move his, his ISD first, because he's out, he's out activated. He's out activated. Mac moves his ISD first. 
right, which will allow him to activate essentially all of his squadrons and smash them into the ISD, um, giving his ISD, his, his uh, ISD-1, um, you know, it's now got this wide arc that it can come in on. Right. At the gladiator and catch it somewhere in here. Yep. And because uh, Eric has strategic advisor, Mac is actually forced to move both his ships before Eric has to move any of his. So you strategic advisor because Max first player, right? So he has to activate oh, of one course. of his two ships. Right. Then Eric strategic advisors. Max moves his other ship. Then he gets uh, basically the entire turn to do what he wants. Hmm. So Max going to have to be careful about that. For uh, sure. He's sort of locked into this trajectory now because of the way the rocks are arranged. So that's yeah. actually a pretty uh, smart setup by Eric. Right. Certainly because of strategic advisor and the fact that Mac has uh, mm -hmm. first first maneuver, um, Mac is moving both of his ships before Eric moves a single ship. So I think if I was Mac, uh, Eric's, Eric's ISD is going to outmaneuver you no matter what. The prudent thing to do may be continue on this trajectory and attempt to kill these Gazantes and use your fighters to kill as many of these guys as possible uh, while staying in the flak bubble of the ISD. So we're just seeing some early positioning here. Uh, we've got uh, Colonel Jendon here, Bosk right here, Dengar just moved up right there. Dengar's little support giving those boys counter. Yep. So now Eric bringing up his squadrons to jump on the ISD. And uh, Mac looking, I suppose, to to count, setting his squadrons up to counterattack uh, once that uh, once Eric sort of springs that trap. It'll be difficult for him to react to what Eric is doing with a uh, fighter command. He's going. I imagine he expects Eric <coughs> to move his squadrons in, and then uh, Mac can attack at some point, the beginning of next turn. Almost, he has to think into this into the third turn. If he decides to jump out next turn, right? I don't think he, he has he, enough of an alpha to kill enough and, of this stuff to make a difference. Right. And look, Eric is actually hiding in. Eric is actually hiding in the rock. So even if Mac does try to jump out and attack, yeah. all the shots will be obstructed. Well, he'd have to come out this way and get Dengar, right? But he can't get Dengar without um, the trying, escort. I'm yeah, I'm trying to find the yeah. escorts. So that's Vader or. Jen or oh there's and there's the two escorts right so you have to engage from yeah. the side here where you're going to be able to be flacked by by these ships uh, Mac thinking about his flak token here from EWS the early warning systems leave it on the front there Mac yeah there we go because he's if Eric pushes his uh his fighters in and then that's likely where they're going to be yeah they can only go far enough to only uh attack the front if they were to push in but Mac has to move his uh his ISD first, so he's going to be, his his front's going to be up here, right? So, I mean, if he, some of these boys move five, right, which might get them down yep. onto this side. All right, so what Mac did, revealed an engineering dial and uh, took a token, then used his nav token to slow down to speed zero. So he's actually going all stop. All stop. Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's a very good move. That's good him. because... Like you said, right? The EWS yeah. chaff token is on the front, yeah. which means that this, these, none of these ships are going to get a shot on this ISD. They're too far away. Yeah. And uh, even if the bombers charged the ISD, they could only go far enough to attack the front. And despite not having any defense tokens, they're not going to be able to do any damage to the ISD because of that chaff token. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. And so, uh, the ISD doesn't have good defense tokens to use against fighters no nothing like scatter or anything like that or redirect like it has redirect but you're redirecting one here one there yep. and then you just end up being you know bitten mm -hmm. to death by bugs right yeah i think that's generally most ships uh don't have really good defense tokens against it's fighters. frustrating to like spend a token like that yep. to like take a two damage to one or to take a one damage and redirect it around somewhere and you're spending your tokens and it can be very frustrating so eric reveals a squadron command with his, uh, I think, with his ISD. I, I was imagining nope. it to be one of the... Yeah, no, it's, it's one the Gazantes. So, and now, you see, he has to move the Gazantes first. Otherwise, he's going to bump again. But that's that might be his plan, right? In leaving these two ships here, right? He's allowed himself... Again, he's trading damage, but he's already got JJ on there, so he's used to that, right? Is that he's given himself the opportunity to stay put 
doing the exact same thing as Max, staying still, mm -hmm. doing a, a zero, uh, right? But uh, in exchange for damage, instead of actually changing his ship's speed, which allows him to go from zero to three very quickly. Th is this I'm is an interesting here. quandary now, because I think Eric was assuming Mac would go this way, and yeah. this possibly would be used for blocking duty, plus activating these squadrons to bomb and or take care of these guys. Yeah. But now that this guy's come to a dead stop, where is this Gazanti going to go? Is it going to continue this way? Is it going to try to turn in? I mean, you're just offering yourself up to the ISD at that point. Yeah. If it continues this way, then it's just going to become irrelevant because it's not like it has boosted comms or anything it, like that. It, that's number three. It's got comms net, so it could pass off that token. Yeah, but actually, but for how long? Because if this ISD is going this way and then this guy's going this way, maybe even as soon as next turn, this is going to be this is going to be out of range of comms net for this. So it looks like a navigate command, uh, I think. For the uh, the raider, now this is a uh, an odd raider. I don't think I've ever seen so many near or almost naked ships in uh, in Armada. Actually, Eric, I think is known for playing a bunch of uh, naked generic ships. Last really? year, he was playing uh, against Robin, and his list was I think three naked Architons. <laughs> Interesting. I think they were naked. Uh, with Vader as his yeah. commander, and then a Simon, I want to say, Simon was his ISD. Yeah. Oh, he's going to move uh, an in, he's gonna do an inside turn with the ISD. Yes. Yeah, see, look, he wants to he, he wants to do this. How odd. Like he's going real wide. You know what I would love to see Mac do? It, it'd be crazy because you're running over a rock. Maybe try to do sharp turns like, like that. In. Yeah. I think I think the smart thing to do in Max case um, is to yeah, not that, try to get that yourself. That got knocked a little, a little yeah. askew, but uh, we'll have to see how much that affects the game. You, you don't want to try to get yourself in an awkward position where you're running over rocks. I think the the name of the game for Mac now is continue this way, try to eliminate this ship, perhaps these two ships, and as many of these squadrons as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, because he's first player, is put himself in danger of making his ISD irrelevant. Because like we saw this last round, right? We had um, we had a player with a short range ISD mm -hmm. as second player, never able to get a really decent shot off. And it looks like the dangers of doing a, a clever, f you know, feint where you're trying to do a flanking maneuver and then crossing around the, the, the length of the field and then coming around the other side is that there's only six turns in the game. Mm -hmm. And you're telegraphing to your opponent exactly what your plan is by doing a move like this. Yeah. Which gives your opponent so much time to uh, to adjust their strategy and respond. This is some great flying with his Gazantes, but uh, again, Max going to speed zeros, but he's been able to delay this engagement. Okay, so we're on the squadron phase now. The question is whether Mac wants to move his, his squadrons again at all. Um, he does have to move first. I think I would enjoy. I would probably park as many on the rock as possible to prevent them from being locked down, mm -hmm. and then next turn try to jump and pick off as much of the edge ships as you possibly can while trying to stay out of the field of flak of this raider. Because the raiders have pretty good flak, if I uh, remember correctly. Yeah, they got two black dice as their flak. But uh, Mac is going to continue to hug his uh, his ISD, which is a good play too. I mean, the the ISD too has two blue dice with uh, for its anti squadron armament with the leading shots. So generic bomber, yeah, at, on uh, Eric's side has moved to this side, and then this is Colonel Jendon right here, parked oh, in front of the uh, the um, raider. So that might be a little bit bubble. of a. An insurance against the Glad. Well, what Mac, I think, is going to do here, I think he might try to get as far as possible and engage one of these guys with Bosk, which is what he's moving right now. So he's engaging Jendon here with Bosk. Yeah, I think. Because the, other, think guys, they're the other guys are on the uh, on the rock yeah. there. And he's... Okay. The other guy, he didn't believe in, in Mac's... Uh... Yeah. Those are official FFG templates, correct? No, the green Max? ones? No. No, 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 Max. Oh, uh, no. No. So the ones he's using right now are from a website called Cogo2. Oh, they I make great stuff. I think they're in, uh, in the UK somewhere. Yeah. Uh, 
after a, a short interruption there, we've got, uh, was that Bosk uh, in with Jendin, and then Max trying to figure out where he wants yeah, so, his uh, so, uh, fighters to be. He attacked, Bosk attacked Jendin there, yeah. and what they were looking at earlier was Zertik is hiding in this rock right here. He wanted to see if they were obstructed so he didn't have to be forced to shoot at Zertik. So that was Mornaki who moved oh. up and did an attack. An attack. Oh, yeah, oh, two oh. black dice. Yeah. Oh, all right then. All I saw was the, the damage he moved. Oh, and there he goes again. And look, uh, he he also kept it in the rock too, so he wouldn't get obstructed. Him. So now, Eric Eric's attacking with Zertik into Mornaki. It's obstructed. Two red dice rolled two blanks, but. Uh, Zertik's ability allows him to deal one damage to a friendly squadron. That's a distance one to reroll. And then so two damage. Yep. Which gets braced down to one. Well, that's uh gets a reroll there. Yeah. It's uh counter two because of Dengar. Mm, and then yep. obstructed, which makes it counter one. Mordekey has been surprising to me, uh with how popular she's become mm -hmm. in the last four to six months. Like, a half a year ago, no one was playing Mordekey in any of their lists. She's I think great. the first time I saw her played at a competitive level, I think, was Christian, one of the Toronto guys, went to Worlds and played a list that if uh, any of you watching um, who play Armada at all probably know the Master of the Fleet guys from Australia. Uh, so, Luke, he runs a blog called the Intel Sweep. And uh, his blog is mostly basically Ooh, articles on strategy. There. Yep. Oh, three hits, sorry. Two hits. It's uh, it's oh, a squadron right. attack. But uh, anyway, he does uh, these things called the overnight report, which is after the day ones of big tournaments. He'll uh, he'll find out the lists of the top placers. Yeah. And so uh, he did uh, he did one on Christian's uh, list, which was the victory star destroyer, gladiator, Architons, and then a bunch of uh, imperial rogues. And uh, that was one of the first times I saw Mornaki played uh, competitively. And since then, she's basically been in every uh, squad, every Imperial list. It's actually very interesting to see the way uh, sort of the evolution of the Imperial squadron ball go from Ad Admiral Sloan's Howl Runner, Mauler Mythil, bunch of TIE fighters to a much more rounded uh, version, which, which is much more closer, I would imagine, to like a a rebel squadron ball sure where it's more multi-role rather right. than like you know strictly anti-fighter with a sloan as a way to um make it into an anti-ship ball still at the bottom of turn two uh max already activated all his fighters and um looks like eric's doing the smart thing pulling back towards his uh flak bubble you can see him hugging uh hugging his raider with a bunch of his squadrons here so it's almost sort of to draw Mac in and so that he can uh, flack them. Well, yeah, because Mac has slowed down to speed zero. Yeah. And what he's pro he, he was try attempting to do here was uh, move into the rock, snipe, and then retreat again if uh, Eric uh, wants, trying to bait Eric into chasing him into the ISD squadron bubble, or the flak bubble, rather. But uh, Eric's not going to play that game. Instead, he's going to pull back his guys to be within the, uh, the raider flak bubble instead. Uh, it's interesting that he's left Jendin sort of high and dry there. I think that was because Jendin moved oh, I see. before, uh, before like he moved, uh, Eric moved Jendin early on in the squadron phase, yeah. which allowed Mac to capitalize. I mean, this is sort of um, what I was concerned about earlier. The, the, the pointy end of Eric's fleet's pretty, pretty compact versus, versus Mac who's sort of like spread out all over the place. Right, but right. what you want to also pay attention to is the directions of these ships, because while it's compact right now, Eric's ship is going this way. These guys are going this way. Max, more of a front, right? If you think yeah. of like a weather front. Yeah. And what he's doing right now is he's slowly projecting his sphere of power, and then he's well, looking to retreat back into his bubble, right? So while it looks like it's scattered right now, that's just because of the squadron activation. Sure. I suspect that this might be a turn where um, Mac ends up using his squadron, one of his squadron dials on, on his Thrawn card. Sure. Uh, he might even use it here, I think, to try to finish off Zertic and then pull back into his flak bubble. Mac is going to Hondo. 
And then he's going to use uh, Thrawn as well. So he gets a little bit of everything then. Yeah. So Hondo's going to give a nav to the ISD and then an engineering to the gladiator. Wow, which... so that gives Eric a squadron and a uh, country fire. Right, but the thing about Hondo is that you need to give them to two different ships. Right. And, and the problem is the ISD, the ISD and these two Gonzadis both have squadron tokens. The only thing you can give a squadron token to is the Raider. Uh, Mac did Hondo at a perfect time because it was the most disadvantageous time for uh, Eric. So here's a ISD activation with Thrawn. So squadron command combined with a navigate dial. So just, just as we discussed, it looks like he's going to actually try to finish off uh, Zertic Storm here with a squadron activation. It looks like uh, Zertic only had one... Uh, one health left, and uh, Merrick Steel at that point is basically an auto kill. Wow. Because you can change one of his dice into a side with a crit, so he changes the black die to a side with a crit hit, deals one damage. Or just moves Mahler Mythlo up. Yeah, except uh, Mahler Mythlo is probably going to be reserved for later in the phase, where he gets to uh, chunk a bunch of damage off these guys. So next activation is Bosk. Bosk is attacking Jendon, so he's using this opportunity to try to pick off uh, pick and off the uh, relay uh, power of Jendon. And he's toast. No, I think oh, Jen Jendon does have brace, so it's going to take a lot of damage to kill him. So after uh, ac attacking, Bosk is going to move. It looks it looks like he's trying to move onto the rock. No, nope. He's moving behind the rock outside yeah. of engagement. No, he's still in engagement range. Oh, okay. So this is Morna Key now. And she's coming out to the edge. So is that obstructed or not? That yeah, he, he wants to be obstructed. Yeah. So two black dice into Jendon. Two hits. Oh. So he's going to spend another brace, go down to one. And I think uh, it's hard to see, but I think Jendon might be at uh, three health now. So now Jendon's going to move in, probably going to use uh, Bosk to double tap with. So he moved Bosk so that he could slightly get Jendon... So Jendon didn't, didn't really have to move. Yep. Oh, what a great roll. Yep. So even with Three the brace again. goes to two. At this point, I think Jendon's lost one of his braces. And I think that puts him at one HP. So he must have spent uh, a token then to get uh, up to... Speed two. Because he, he had he dialed in a nav command with mm -hmm. the ISD. Yeah. Used the Thrawn squad dial. Yeah. And then at the start of the turn, Hondo gave the ISD a nav token. Yeah. So he went from zero to two. Great. Yeah, so like just like we discussed, right? He's going to try to intercept these Gazantes here. Yeah. Because now they're isolated from this ship. Uh, try to finish off as many of them as possible while keeping these guys within a reasonable range of the flak bubble. Now, I'm not sure what the Demolisher is going to do, but it's it's it'd be foolish to challenge the ISD directly. I would probably go this way. Right. Or maybe in. slow down and try to weave through here. Seventh Fleet so Star Destroyer. <laughs> actually, something that... Again, as has very like come into the meta. Well, I think it's coming into the meta solely on the basis of Mac forcing it in. Sure. Yeah, Mac has. If, if you look at if you look at Mackenzie's list, right, the Gladiator is not. It's not even a demolisher. It's a. No, it's not. No, it's a. Uh, it's a projection expert's shield battery for the ISD. So it behooves the. Uh, it, it behooves the Gladiator to stay close to the ISD. So that's why I think it's going to go this way. I just heard Eric refer to it as a demolisher. Now, I know that people just do that by force of habit. Right, but virtually the only yeah. lines you see are demolishers. Yeah. That, that's Mac's thing, though. Mac really likes uh, subverting your expectations when it comes to uh, list building. He, he tells me that he doesn't really like playing meta stuff. Like, he, he'll never be caught dead playing Reekin' Aces, classic Reekin' Aces or anything like that. What's wrong with him? You know, some people are just like that. They just it's, don't want to. It's wanna... very patriotic. I feel the fly Rican Aces. Not only is it a beautiful, not only is it a good armada list. It looks like a fluffy EU rebel fleet. Oh, look at this! This isn't so. This is an this activation. Is, this is yeah, so that's I, I called that last round. Where I was like, he's moving those back there, so he's gonna like jump in on the demol on the demolisher on the glad one and. So I some damage through. I believe this is a uh, squadron activation by this guy. Yeah. Relaying through Jendin to move a bomber into uh, bombing range of this ship. Yeah. 
and then the next bomber is coming up too. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I think what happened is that he he may have maneuvered his bomber such that the other bomber can't and go can't far enough to. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. So Dengar moving into position uh, next to Jendon. It looks like he's going to take a shot at Mornaki. Two blue dice. Uh, nope, nope. He tried a swarmy roll, but nothing's engaged with him. Yeah. So one damage onto Mornaki from Dengar. And I think he gets one more activation here. And he's just attacking Mornaki. She's obstructed. Yep. For nothing, it looks like. Yeah, hiding in the rock uh, also uh, prevents Swarm from triggering. Not that he had another ship uh, engaged with Mornaki, but that's why you want to hide in the rock as well. The trade-off is worth it, losing a die. These these Star Destroyers are a real fly by night, just passing each other. Just, yeah, it didn't it didn't have to be that way, right? I think I think Mac was uh, correct to do this maneuver because I, mean, uh, I, you, I don't even know if it's. I mean, both players have to consent to do this sort of maneuver, but Mac slowed down yeah. to zero, and Eric bumped his his uh, ISD and then did like that crazy maneuver with JJ off to the side. Except so, Mac has a consolation prize in these two Gazantes. Like they're I they're basically going to get Pac manned by this uh, by this ISD. Waka 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 yeah. waka waka. Whereas whereas uh, Eric, I mean, because his other ships are in the way, he's going to have to. Uh, I don't know if that thing is at speed three right now, his ISD, but he's going to have to move fast if he wants to catch that Gladiator before it runs away. I believe it is still uh, speed three. But you're right, people will expect that Glad to act as a demolisher, move fast, hit fast, run hard. And uh Yep. It's not. And so with JJ, certainly I think at the beginning of round or in turn four, uh I fully expect the ISD to be on or around the like this location here. It's he's gonna be near the uh station. Um but certainly, if if he's on the station, right, with a very wide arc there, and then the glad heart turns in here, as yep. you were saying, then uh, he's just going to get a long shot with an ISD-1 that's not so great. And then uh, he's going to be, the, the glad's going to be gone or in, around, in and around behind the I max ISD-2. Yeah, I think, I think this is a turn where... Eric's uh, Gazanti's collide with each other. I think I think Gazanti number three is actually going at speed three. It is right now. Okay, yeah. so he could leapfrog if he wanted to. I believe that's his intention. Well, Mac has first that first activation that might be blue range here. I think but it's just a little too far. It's just a tad far, yeah. just by eyeballing it. So gladiator activation. I believe it was a nav command, but he does get a Thrawn dial. So so two squadron activations. I think he's looking to move. Yeah, he's he's looking to see if Mahler Mythil can go far enough to touch this guy here, to touch the Jendin. Uh, this is table one, so these players both uh, have done exceedingly well. I believe one was 16 points going around three. The other was 18 points going around three. So um, they've done quite well. Mac averaging nine points for his two first games and Eric averaging eight obviously so I think or unless he had 17 points I forget so they, they are like, first and second place going second into this round table yeah and both of them playing very conservatively here um certainly an armada that serves you well since they're both out in front well not so much I mean in in armada if you play conservatively that gives the opportunity for people in third and fourth to leapfrog you Ooh, big hits there. With counter four blue hits in a row. That's fair, but I mean, sort of, I guess, what my point was. Um, even if it's like a 5 4 or a, a 7 3, right? One of these players is going to be. You know, as long as you can preserve enough of those points, you, you you're have still going to gonna be yeah. in the 20s, which just puts you in like a shot of being in the finals. Yeah, it, it all depends on how far ahead you are of the rest of the pack. Uh, you can be far enough ahead where getting a 6-5 victory or even a 5-6 loss can still guarantee you uh, at least second place. It's Mac measuring for Dengar. 
his Mahler just uh, splashed his Mahler. Yeah. So Max Mahler splashed Eric Mahler, and I think he was just trying to check to see if Dengar could reach uh, Mahler, which uh, I don't think he can. Interesting. Oh, that's quite a quite a move with Dengar. Yeah, so Dengar just... usually want to keep him in the in the fight, keep him at range of your other ships to give them the counter buff. But there he is moving him uh, out into uh, the debris. But I suppose that is going to allow him to attack the the bombers there that uh, Eric's yep. pushing against his glad. So he's just peeking out of the uh, the rock so that he's engaging yeah. the tie bomber. But the tie bomber can't engage him because it's he... heavy. Uh, okay. Well, it depends if it's Gamma Squadron. Uh, Gamma Squadron is not heavy. Right. But uh, I don't think so. My point was more like the, it was a discussion earlier about what was obstructed yep. or not. And you draw line of sight from the, uh, not from the base, but from the peg. And so the peg is behind the debris. And so it will be obstructed even if you're peeking out. Right. Correct? What's that? Sorry. So you're obstructed even if you're peeking out. Right? No, it's, you're drawing a line of sight between the closest yeah. point of your ship or your squadron to the closest point of your opponent's squadron. If there's any rocks on that line while you draw that line, yeah. then it's obstructed. But uh, if you're peeking out, that means your closest point is not, is not obstructed. Right. Yeah. So there we go. The, uh, the glad is turning in. That's going to be, make it difficult for Eric to catch it. Certainly with his quick moving ISD. What, at a speed three, that'll probably put that there this turn, which is not going to be close enough to take a, a medium range shot. And Mac is most likely, if he's not within, if he's in within medium range, he's probably going to activate this guy first and just jet out here. Well, he has to activate both of his ships first, right? Like, uh, I suppose he doesn't have to. Eric doesn't have to use his strategic advisor every turn. Uh, I believe this turn, instead of using his, his strategic advisor, he moved one of his Gazantes. Yep. Uh, to what end? I'm not really sure. Well, he wanted to activate his Gazanti because he, he wanted, wanted to command. activate the squadron commands before Mac could activate the remaining two squadrons. Because right. Jendon was in danger of dying if he didn't do right. anything, yeah. so he had to pull him back. Yeah. Again, the objective is fighter ambush, but uh, as we're probably going to see, fighter ambush is probably not going to be all that relevant this game. Um, unless... Now, Mac does have a bit of an advantage in that he's killed one of Eric's squadrons and uh, all of Mac's squadrons are still alive. But uh, usually in, in when, the, when the squadrons are evenly matched like this, it just generally ends up being both, uh, both players wiping out the majority of each other's squadrons. So whatever is left generally doesn't have enough firepower to punch through shields and start dealing fighter ambush tokens. Or if they do, they're only dealing out one or two fighter ambush tokens at a time. It can snowball versus a uh, an all ship list, right? But it's certainly no uh, superior positions where with with a superior fighter force you can just farm those tokens. All right, flotilla number three activating. Okay. Yeah, it would work, but I mean, you still hear. Like, you have to turn both of them off and then be silent. And... All right, so flak and attack. Not enough to kill off the Mahler Mythal. Question is whether or not uh, Eric can successfully leapfrog Gazanti number four and not box himself in. It, it is speed three, but uh, Gazantis have weird maneuverability. So it normally can't do a double tick without a navigate command, but he does have Jerjerod, which allows him to do a tight turn on joint one, and that allows him to successfully escape the ISD's front arc. Now, uh, what this probably means is that Mac may not be able to catch either Gazanti. So depending on what the Raider does, if it goes this way, uh, Mac may just turn up and try to intercept the Raider and uh, take that trophy instead. Yeah, it's not like it's going to be a high-scoring game, whatever happens here. No, it's unfortunate. I mean, because depending on how the rest of the pack does, uh, if, if it ends up being a 6-5 and uh, both the, the second and the third table, one player ends up scoring yeah. very high as a result, it could knock both these players off the final table. Uh, this is a reasonable chance that the Raider will get killed, but... Yeah, still, still on turn three. So there's three, there's three more turns for the, 
Yeah, there's three more turns for the uh, the raider to die. I could even see uh, the gladiator going up this way, potentially. So meanwhile, raider's getting activated here. Not sure what the what the command dial was. Just checking for flak. Don't doesn't look like it has any. Turning in that way. Eh, that could work. If you end your movement far enough away from the gladiator, you could try to... You could bait... Well, not bait, but you could force Mac to move first, getting into black dice range and then trying to finish it off. A squadron command with the ISD. Three squadrons left that haven't been on, uh, haven't been activated, and I think those three are. There's a few more. There's one behind uh, the demolisher that hasn't been activated yet, right? No, it has been. That was the bomber that oh, activated right. early in the turn. It looked like there was a blue. So that was Darth Vader that moved in first, and I think following up Darth Vader is going to be Merrick Steel here. That wasn't Vader. Yeah, this is Vader right here. Uh, and this was a generic TIE Bomber. So, uh, it looks like, looks like Mahler Mithil doesn't have a scatter token left and only one HP, so it's not going to be very hard for Vader to deal enough damage to kill him. Yeah, accuracy for the brace, and because Vader counts uh, crits as damage icons, that was four damage there. Might be in might be in uh, Eric's best interest to try to kill, try to deal as much damage to the to the gladiator as possible before the ISD turns in for the kill, perhaps. Because of uh, of Moth Jurgerod, it I can I can see it being very easy for Eric to do a hard turn this yeah, way. To bring he, that ISD into bear. Yeah, he may even be willing to run over this rock here to do it. But I mean, can Mac kind of vacate quickly enough that he won't be able to turn all the way? Well, maybe, but Eric maneuvered his raider here so that uh I don't know. I mean, Mac could still potentially go like this. Yeah, there's a lane yeah. for the demolisher to get through. If he's going fast enough, I think the concern at this point is that yep. Mac, unless Mac brings his ships up to speed, he's not going to be able to catch the Gazantes yep. or, or run away fast enough with the, uh, the Gladiator. Yeah, meanwhile, mm -hmm. Merrick still went here and bombed uh, the Gladiator. Yeah. Dealing two damage, but Mac has brace redirect for that. So yeah, look, look at this. He's gonna he's gonna get the double tick. Get JJ, yeah, mark your yep. ships, boys. They've just been picking them up willy nilly. They're better players than that. Yeah, this is this is actually a pretty cool maneuver because he's gonna put himself. He moved a little, here. a little further. Yeah, yeah. And I was saying he was gonna be here, but that's because he's got the yep. JJ tick, right? Now. That's going to cause Mac to try to go this way. But I don't think even at speed 3, that's going to that's gonna be far enough to let him escape from the Raiders' front, front arc and black dice. Now, is, is there a possibility that um, Mac is able to double tap the Raider with his ISD and his Gladiator? But not from the same ship, obviously, but he can attack it with two of his ships at the moment and at the ISD too. Here, he's probably got medium range to uh, to that. Right, but look at the arc, right? The arc's going like this. So he's oh, only got only this side. side and not only that, it's through this rock here. Ah, I see. Yeah, that's rough. So what, what he could potentially do, and it all depends on whether this is at close range, uh, he, he'll Throndal again, activate Merrick Steel, yeah, activate Merrick Steel to try to bomb the Raider, softening it up before Black Dice attack. 
I mean, Mac's going to move, I'm assuming his gladiator, but he, he might not, he might, he might decide to move the ISD first. Mm -hmm. Uh, if this is not in black dice range, I would move the ISD first, activate as many squadrons as I can to try to try to soften later. this guy up, yeah. forcing this to move and then potentially move on. Finishing off the glad. Yeah. So he is actually activating the ISD first using a Thrawn dial first uh, yeah. squadron command, and it's got a nav command on that. And so with the Seventh Order or Seventh Fleet Star Destroyer title, they're also able to negate damage between each other by tapping the card, correct? Yeah, only that, only damage from the that's going to the front. Only damage to the front. Yeah. Ooh, okay. And so then Max really in a rough position to sort of make it take advantage of that. Well, he, with he every shot except for the raider. Yeah, the raider would be able to do it. That's boring. Yeah. We just need the destruction. Oh yeah. So you, you totally should. That's fair. <laughs> Ouch, that looks like it was an attack uh, from Bosk onto Merrick. Onto Merrick Steel, yep. That looked like it did a lot of damage. Yeah, br I mean, Merrick Steel has Brace, so he took two damage, looks like, there. He's got a double, thought he, had, he has double tokens, correct? He does, yep. But uh, Jendon's going to use Bosk to double tap attack into Merrick Steel again. Two damage. Uh, notice, uh, notice Eric has been very careful not to damage Bosk at all. Because uh, then that would turn on his ability to get a blue accuracy uh, whenever he attacks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So now we're going to see the Jendin second attack. Hopefully, going to finish him off. Uh, it only it only rolled he only rolled two damage. Oh, so with okay. the brace, it would do down to one. Yeah, a double attack with Bosk is not really going to finish off a full health Merrick steal. But oh, I thought Merrick had previously been damaged. Sorry. No, I think I think he only got. I don't think he got damaged at all. It's Jendin that almost got killed. The the Jendin half of that uh, that combo. All right. So here's uh, Dengar coming in to try help kill uh, Merrick Steel. Swarm reroll looks like it went off. All right. Yep, three damage. And that's, uh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, that puts him to one, I think. And, well, that's that's still alive. That's not quite the. Uh... Mm -hmm. So finally, we get we get to see an ISD shoot. Mac accomplished much there. Uh, here's another attack coming. I believe this is at the side at the uh, at the raider. At the raider. And it looks like we're seeing some damage. Uh, Taking it on the shields. The front shield. Oh, slows down. Yeah, he wants to. He wants to keep the uh, the raider in the front arc. This is good. Yeah, he. He. I don't think he had a. Uh, he. I don't think he had a hope of catching this uh, Gazanti if Eric didn't let him. Well, they're, they're moving at two and three after he moves. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's why I was like, he has to move very, yep. very quickly to even get close to them. But turning back into the fight, I, I don't think, with Brunson and EWS, I don't think he's going to lose the ISD2 in, in two turns. This is an extremely low-scoring game at this point. It looks like, though, that they're going to need to get a seven to make it to the finals. Uh, one, one player needs a seven? Okay. Yeah. Ooh. So he attacked, uh, attacked the front of the gladiator. And... Not much happened. No, it was a, it was a double hit, actually. But Mac used Seventh Fleet to prevent one damage. And yeah. then uh, I think he redirected or something. So, yeah, as Travis said earlier, uh, one player needs a s seven points, I think mm -hmm. you said, to make they're, the top yeah, two. They're going over the standings. The standings, right yeah. Now. So the threshold between a 6-5 victory and a 7-4 victory is 60 points. So if uh, Mac, I think if Mac kills the Raider and doesn't lose too much else aside from maybe one piddling squadron, then I think that seals a 7-point victory for Mac. Uh, in order for Eric to take this victory instead, he's going to have to make sure the Raider survives, not lose any more squadrons, and kill the Gladiator. So meanwhile, more more harassment on uh, on Max Gladiator by the by Eric's squadrons. Uh, Dengar looks like he did one damage. Yeah, it's and frustrating I, that we can't know the exact uh, damage output that's going on here, but certainly it doesn't seem like it's been enough to 
kill it. There's these there's these guys in uh, Victoria, Australia, called the I think they're called Fly Casual. I think sure. they do uh, Armada as well, but they they do live streams of. Uh, Sorry, they do X Wing as well, but I think they the do live streams do, of Armada. Uh, yeah, they have a really good overlay. Like they list all the remaining shields and hull of each ship. All right, so it looks like uh, either the Gamma Squadron or Tie Bomber is gonna keep bombing. Remember, because Dengar is basically in the middle of that entire ball, this is letting Eric uh, ignore Max Squadrons and attack the Gladiator instead. All right, so with two damage, uh, braces it to one. Looks like the only uh, squadron left on Eric's side to activate is uh, Mauler Mythal. I'm getting flashbacks. PTL open. I think we're still on the they were still on the ice deactivation. Yeah. So Merrick Steel is activating here. So that's Merrick Steel right here. Uh, he's engaged by Dengar, so he's forced to attack him and not bomb the Gladiator. So that's good positioning by Mac. All right, here's a big ISD attack. Now this is into the Gladiator, right? <clears throat> oh, he's got to move Mahler first. Yeah, so c can't make it far enough to attack the Gladiator. So instead he's going to... He's going to tap on uh, Max Merrick Steel. He's going to tap on Ma That's fine. Max Merrick Steel and uh, deal damage to it. Now here's the big attack. Front arc into the side of the Gladiator. It's a medium range shot. Looks like one, two, three, four damage. Mac using an evade to re-roll. He might be out of brace here. This is the ISD attack. Looks pretty light yeah. for an ISD attack, doing four damage. Usually want to see something like six or seven rolling well. Five or six with a with an accuracy or two. I'm glad still taking damage. Yeah, finally managed to punch through the side shields of the Gladiator. Dealt three hull. The uh, crit was compartment fire, which is they can't ready defense tokens. Woof. I think the problem was... Uh, Mac uh, may have spent his defense tokens against the bombing attacks. Yeah. Which uh, I think he didn't realize that Eric actually had Avenger title on his IST, mm -hmm. which meant the only defense token he was able to use was the uh, was the evade token. Now it looks like Eric's setting up another bump here, ramming uh, ramming Max. Glad getting another damage in. Let's see if he does it with yeah. his range. Yeah, no he range. has to be careful of this rock here, though. Uh, yeah, that looks like he gets it, but he's got to set up uh, the bump in a way that, oh, again, uh, Eric not marking any of his ships. Um, yeah, I think he was he was going to run over those squadrons, so. Yeah, but um, if he he hasn't yet locked in, right? Yeah. So I would I would suggest not. Um, so it looks like the, the, there he's locking in here. He's going to give the Glad another damage, and he's going to, again, do a two maneuver with his three-speed ISD. It, it does not look like that, that ship would have been overrun. So. I don't know. Maybe it's the X-Wing player in me, but uh, mm -hmm. mark your squadrons, boys. Well, there's definitely... Yeah, I, I, see, I see plenty of X-Wing players that jump out. Okay. Uh, oh, they've got to. Well, I mean, like, I try, you know... It's well, like X-Wing is definitely, like, each each squadron is super important, I think. But yeah. <clears throat> it's definitely a little bit of fudging in Armada. Uh, Armada is a, a game where it's... Hour? Yeah, where it's... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, where it's loosey-goosey till it's exact. Right, and then it's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. You can just, you know, measure whatever. Well, do whatever. that's why as, like, a, right, as a rule, no, right, every time I move something, yeah. I try to verbally agree with my opponent. Okay, so these guys are engaged, right? Mm -hmm. So just in case, if I have to move it later for like adjusting health or something, there's no longer a dispute. So. Sure. So now um, we're going to turn five. It looks like um, mm -hmm. Gladiator's not dead. Raider's not dead. Um, there's, there's dead squadrons on both sides. What's the score currently? 
No, but like, what's what's the Armada score? Six five. Six. This is a six five right now. Right now, so one player needs to get more than 60 points than the mm-hmm. other player mm-hmm. to go to 7-4. Right. So uh, what's the path to victory here? And, and, and you know, uh, it was said earlier that, you know, a player needs seven. Yes. So that sounds like that player is Mac to get to 25. Yeah. In order to, in order to secure the seven, mm-hmm. Mac needs to kill the raider, not lose the gladiator. Right. So and Eric then, probably no, needs an eight, or is Eric's probably hunting for an eight or a nine here? So what's the pro point difference that he require he requires to get to the that eight or nine that gets him oh, to the top? Oh, I, I don't think it's possible for him to get a nine at this point. So an eight would have to be uh, what's sixty plus an eighty? One hundred and forty. There needs to be a margin of one hundred and forty. So to cross so an seven, eight, eight might get him where he needs to be, right? That's that might be possible if he if he kills. Uh, the Glad and more of Max Squadrons, he could certainly get there, right? I, I don't think that's going to be possible because right now a lot of Eric's uh, squadrons are on the verge of dying. Right. And Max Squadrons are still fairly healthy. Right. I don't think he's going to be able to... Cause, c- because so that's, it's that a, looks like Eric's... Yeah. Eric's Merrick just died? Yep. Sir. Oh, he went to speed zero with his gladiator. This this is smart because, uh, I mean, if he moved, he would have been right in black dice range of this raider. Right. By going to speed zero, he uh, he's going to force, obviously, he's going to force the raider to move first. Right. Oh, sorry. He's, he's gonna. He's it, actually going to speed zero. He would have. Yeah. If he went to. If he didn't do. If he did anything other than speed zero, he would have gotten. Um, he would have gotten mulched by the raider. I think. That he, they showed us that it's that the arc is, just out, so he's not even in the front arc of the raider, which has no uh, external or yeah external racks. Yep. Right. Which is which is pretty key in like bumping up the raider's firepower to to make it go and then that adds that those dice to the front side rear wherever you want to use them so um that's yeah pretty interesting decision I mean, it does mean that you die to the isd but it also then forces him to move that isd first allowing max isd to get another you know range two shot right uh, middle range or however you call it right here on uh, on the front of eric's raider so this is crazy, but I could potentially see him going like this, yeah. If he can go fast enough and getting out of the front arc of the ISD. Yeah, yeah, as the the first maneuver he can of the round. Yeah. You'll know better than I if that's a possible maneuver. Got out the rear to Merrick Steel, and if I heard correctly, I think that puts um, Max Merrick Steel at one hit point. I mean, that's good. I mean, uh, as I said, I think in the last game, right, I like to talk about, especially when I'm casting X-Wing, I like to talk about, like, paths to victory. Yep. Right, like, what is each player's motivation? How are they trying to do what? How are they trying to get from this position to a winning point? Like, everyone in the game is trying to win. Yeah. I mean, and as, as odd as that sounds to harp on, like, we often do forget, you know, the, the win condition. And, and, you know, here the win condition is getting to the top two. Right, and that is winning by a seven three or an eight two. Yeah, that's that's actually the really cool thing I like about Armada is that, uh, you know, in for example, in X Wing, your win condition is just win, win the game. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really mm-hmm. matter by how much you win by. Now, I in in Armada, the cool situation is here is like I don't need to go all out to win. I just need to make sure I ensure a seven four victory in order to secure the top two. Right. Now, that it has its downsides, of course, too, because mm-hmm. you may have those situations in tournaments where you're so far ahead of your opponent or you're so far ahead of second place, the best way to secure a victory mm-hmm. is to not engage your opponent all run away and get a 6-5. Which is kind of what Mac is doing here. He was dropping to zero, forcing his opponent to like misplay or like awkwardly maneuver around him. And here we can see Eric's trying to set up. He's, he's working at it again. Uh, I really love uh, how uh, aggressive his play through maneuvering has been and how he's yeah. aggressively been, you know, ramming and bumping with his ships. That's something that, um, actually, a type of play in Armada that I, you don't see very often. It's something that 
I'm a fan of. Um, and certainly, uh, let's see, did he, if he is even going to do it in here, is he going to make it? Wow, did he make it? Yeah. I think he was going for the overlap. Eh, it looks like an overlap, actually. And then you can see how he's organized, how he's lined it up. If he does bump, he can push back. Is it? That's so, oh man, it's so hard to tell. No, I don't know. Wow, that's not an, not a bump? He tried really hard to make that a bump. Oh, they're trying to set it in the guides. Because it's the dials that pop out. Like, the shield dials count as bumping, which is eternally frustrating, but also... Uh, yeah, what are these boys doing? Oh, oh they did bump. Wow. They bumped and they both died? <laughs> that, that trade is actually favorable for Eric. In fact, that's, well, that's, that's funny because it. that's, yeah, that's exactly the type of thing you'd do. So that puts... I mean... Max still winning, but you know mm -hmm. Eric's cli climbing up. He's 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 uh, splitting the difference, right? So, you know he's with his ISD. He's got all of Max ships around him, or all Max squadrons. Sorry, he can certainly start flacking, start pushing out some of that ISD flak damage, and you know start start carving into those ships. Yeah. So Mac, sorry, Eric needs to kill any one of Max squadrons. And he's in the lead. But then he has to make sure he doesn't lose anything. Right. And trying to, like, extend that up to, as you said, you know, he's got to get to 60 and then 140 right. in points differential to even start to be competitive in the tournament. Yeah. Right? Because there's winning this game and then there's yep. getting to the top two for those juicy, juicy yep. top prizes. Right? And, well, this, and for playing for playing for Worlds. Yeah, and it, it invites, the Invite to Worlds is on the line. Uh, they've left a sad little token on the board, but that's all right. A reminder of what used to be. Yeah, it's the remainder of... That's the... You know what I miss from... the flight uh, computer of the Gladiator. So meanwhile, uh, Gamma Squadron died. Uh, Mac did use the last Thrawn dial on his stack for a Squadron Command. And uh, used it, I believe, to activate... He did activate Morna Key with Thrawn. I think it was the only one that was in range to be activated, but yeah. So it looks like uh, Eric uh, activated his squadron command as well. Perhaps. So there's certainly a possibility still moving on from here, right? That these, you know, Mac, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for Eric to climb even. Now, it feels odd saying this, that it's going to be hard for him to climb that 25-point gap right now. 26 point gap yeah I, I well he would have to kill two squadrons yes or more a key just and I, and I i'm not sure how he gets there uh i mean vader's in there but he's gonna have mm -hmm. to be pushing those um those squadron commands right and he basically has to completely obliterate uh max yeah well he is shooting a Mordecai, actually, right? Yeah. No, so, she needs to die. She's the most expensive yeah. one. That gets him the that gets him into the lead, but I'm not sure it gets him much other than the lead. Yeah. There. The problem is there is not enough time to do anything else. Yeah, they're not going to be able to kill each other's yeah. uh, star destroyers. I don't even think the star destroyers have shot at each other uh, at this point. All right. So. Uh, he does stick his Dengar just barely out enough so he doesn't get obstructed with Mornikey. Ends up rolling a uh, hit. Uh, and with a counterattack, I don't think it ended up dealing any damage there. Ouch. But yeah, he, has, he does have three more activations, so I think this is the correct thing to do here. Now, is, is that... Did we get it wrong? Is that Eric... No, okay. I was going to ask if that was Eric's... Uh, Merrick Steel, but that he's pushing, I believe, Vader up there to attack um, Max. Max Mer uh, Merrick, Merrick Steel. Steel, yep. So that's Vader attacking Merrick Steel there. And lots of damage. I think I think Merrick Steel's at one health. Both of them were, were pretty yeah. toasty. Yeah, five damage. It's a little bit overkill, but yeah. So now we have, uh, we have the gap closing to five points. Um, I think all Eric can do at this point is perhaps secure a 6-5 victory if he kills one more squadron, but I, I don't see him getting anything more than that. I 
Actually, you know, we may be wrong about that. I need to check for uh, fighter ambush tokens. I'll be right Sure, back. go for it. Uh, the glad may, in fact, yeah, have taken yeah. some. Mac has one fighter ambush token. This one? I think it was when he bombed the uh, raider yeah. earlier in the game. I think at that point that, that puts it. Well, that's. Actually, I mean, Eric can still kill Morniki and, and put himself in the lead, but. So this is a flak with the uh, Imperial One Star Destroy here. Oh, scatter. Yeah, Jerry, uh, Jerry trying to make something happen. There's just simply not enough turns to. Uh, there's simply not enough turns to, to do anything with that ISD. So just a reminder to viewers, we're in a Legion Hall today. The floor below us just started a, a, some live music, and we're right over the stage. So this is Mornaki attacking uh, Eric Stengar. Ooh. Yeah, it's just going to get scattered, but he's trying to burn through the scatter so uh, so he can actually land some hits on Mornaki. So now Boss is going to attack Dengar using... Oh, okay. Okay, so... Oh, yep, four. Yep. Three hits? Three hits. Funky. All right, Bosk using Jendin into Dengar with a braces burn. You just need to deal damage to kill him. Yeah. So that's uh, Dengar down on Eric's side. Ouch. <clears throat> That's going to jump Mac to a 145, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Eric wants to keep, needs to keep the points differential at six, under 60. I believe under 60, yeah. Yeah, to keep it at a 6.5. And they just... All right. So they, they just shook on it. They said that there's no way anything else is going to get killed. So I think the final tally is... Uh, no, it's... Uh, Mac it, should have 145. Dengar just died. Yeah. 